I feel like this is inviting a lot of argument. No, that's like the bottom of the barrel. Like, why am I crying? Oh my God, so sad. Hey y'all, it's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. I'm feeling really excited about today's episode. I'm always excited to talk Disney and and all planning things that we talk about on this show, but you've asked and you've asked again, and we are going to <laughs> cross the coast today and dive into Disneyland a little bit more. We did do one episode about Disneyland where we sort of compared them. What's different about Disneyland and World? But today we're going to shine a spotlight. No comparisons, all about Disneyland. I couldn't be joined by two better people. LJ is here with me and Chris. Hello, girls. Hey. hey. Hello. And they both have had fairly recent trips to Disneyland. Chris was there within the last couple of months, LJ as well. Although yours was maybe a few months back. Like I feel like time is blending, but it was still pretty recently. Yeah, the last time I was in was April. So it's been like six months. Oh my gosh. Wah, that's wah. That feels like <laughs> I know it feels so long, but I am going I am going back um in January. So it's gonna be okay. And I think that the fact that you just pointed that out, like April is six months ago as we're recording this, but it feels like it was so recently. And I think that's just a test. Like if I were to at any given moment, you're a Floridian, Chris is all the way up in Washington. So you couldn't be more opposite. And if I were to at any moment say to you, LJ, when was the last time you were at Disney World? The answer would be like <laughs> five minutes, five minutes Two ago. Days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, we just got back from the first ever Smart Moms Travel Conference. And I don't know if y'all can hear it in my voice today, but it's Disney tired coming out in my vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. It was so, like, it was just so amazing. And If you've never taken, first of all, an adult trip, and this was like the world's colliding of adult trip and work trip and learn about yourself in a lot of ways trip, but it just takes the Disney tired and levels it up to like 1 million. Mm -hmm. But I slept so much. I, yesterday was my first, cause I did round tables two days beforehand then two days after. So I had like a solid seven days of conferencing which I got to tell you, like, I didn't do the math on beforehand. Like, I, I don't, I, I definitely was not like going into it being like, I have seven days of this right now. You didn't plan a down day. Yeah, I, I didn't plan my down day for sure. And yesterday was my first day that I was like, I did not have to head to the contemporary for something. And I was like, wow, I slept, I slept and slept and slept and slept. I like, I needed it. I think I slept till like 10. Yeah, I was, wow. I focused a lot on downtime while we were down there for the conference. If I wasn't, working or doing something conference related, I really tried to take my own advice and enjoy the room and the resort of it. (laughs) And I still feel like this, but I think it's great. I actually haven't been to Disneyland in a little bit. My twins have never been. So that gives you sort of a a gauge on the time. I know. Isn't that terrible? I feel like what's going on with you. I know. I feel like such a fraud. I haven't been to Disneyland. I, um, (laughs) but I do love Disneyland and I have been quite quite many, you know, a lot of times in my life. Um, and so I'm excited to talk about Disneyland Park. When was y'all's first time to visit Disneyland? My first time was, uh, I was about eight years old and it was when they were actually building California Adventure. And so we got to see what is now the Incredicoaster getting built. Um, so this was back in 2000. My parents surprised my sisters and I, we thought we were just getting to go to Seattle for a night to do school shopping. I don't know why it didn't clue in that it was like the end of October. Uh, school starts at Labor Day for us. So why were we school shopping then? But we woke up the next morning and we have pictures of us as kids. My youngest sister, she was only like two. So she obviously wasn't reading, but they were little pictures of girls that were in like red dresses that had polka dots on them and then Mickey ears. And on the back, it said one free trip to Disneyland. And we joke that 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 was my parents' downfall right then and there because it <laughs> all three of us are hooked. Uh, we are all Disney adults and we are now creating our own children and creating another generation. So it was we went and we actually got to see the changeover happen. So we saw Halloween. We were there on October 31st. 
we came back the next morning and there was a Christmas tree erected on Main Street. So talk about like stepping straight into all things Disney magic. Like it's funny now looking back as an adult because that was the moment that I, I became literally obsessed with Disney. I wanted to know not just like the park itself and the awe and the magic of it. But like I started researching how to become a Disney Imagineer. I was eight years old and I wanted to learn how to be a part of that magic. And now I get to do it in a way that I absolutely love because I get to help other moms experience that same feeling, you know, seeing it through their children's eyes. So it's super fun. That is such a sweet story. It's so good. And it's why I'm so glad that you that we're doing this episode together because we we often call you like our actually you coined the term like our boots on the ground west coast disneyland girl because unlike lj and i and a lot of people to be quite honest you know our Mm -hmm. love for disney started on the other coast and so for you to have fallen in love with this at disneyland where it all started truly is is going to be a really fun perspective today lj did you think about it long enough do you know i did yes i remember and when i thought about it i was like I can't believe you forgot this because I was trying to think more recent, but my actual real first time was um, on my 29th birthday. So about 10 years ago, um, I'm 39 now. And I went to the West coast. I was like nearing the end of like my employment with enterprise. Like I was, I was already in the place where I was like disillusioned with corporate life and like feeling like this doesn't make any sense. Like I want to see my kids more than this. And I took like a long weekend and went to see one of my best enterprise friends who was in the process of like leaving enterprise. And I went to like, kind of have a chat with her and figure out what was going on with her life. While we were there, I was like, we have to go to Disneyland. And this is kind of too much information, but my period was late. And I was like, I'm going to take a pregnancy test in Disney World because, or in Disneyland, because like, if I am pregnant, wouldn't that be incredible to like find out at Disneyland? And yeah. Mike wasn't with me. So I was like, I, I told him I was gonna, and he, he was like, okay, you know, and he said like, he could not bear it if he didn't, if like so, anything happened to me and he didn't know whether I was pregnant or not. So he was like, if you find out that you're pregnant, don't tell me on the phone, but you have to send me like a note because like, if your plane goes down or something and I never know that you're, you were, whether you were pregnant or not, isn't that morbid, but it, whatever. It didn't feel like that at the time. I, think it felt like great. Just, like, I don't think it's morbid. He loved me. So we, I found out and sure enough, I was pregnant and it's Asher, you know, my nine-year-old and I sent him a, a let, I sent him a postcard that said, um, it was in this like really cool old hotel. I like dropped this little postcard in their like little mail slot, which was really neat. But it's, I wrote on it, like, um, if, if this postcard makes it, but I don't, I'll take care of the baby in my belly. You take care of the babies in your arms. And I'm like, Why am I crying? crying? Oh my god, so sad. Uh, LJ, my pregnancy hormones can't handle that story right now. Uh, <laughs> I know I have like post conference emotions too. I know. Like, I'm like I did, not. Uh, I'm not a super emotional person, honestly. But that really just got me. That I can't. I bet that's like a sort of lesser known story. That's a really. You no, know, I don't think I've. Sh- yeah, I don't think I've shared it that yeah. often. Because I mean, we all like. I definitely know your story about how your trip to Disney world really set you on this trajectory, but my gosh, that's like a really crazy story. I Disneyland for me was not until I was an adult. It was actually, I think I've mentioned this before on the show. I believe I mentioned it on our Disneyland versus world episode. It was my oldest daughter's first Disney experience, which is just super weird because I'm such a Disney world person. I grew up and you know, everything, but her first uh, Disney experience was Disneyland and her first castle was baby castle. And her first main street was, was Disneyland. And, um, you know, it was so much fun and it was my first time there as well. So we sort of experienced it together. She was, she was a baby. She was, um, just turned one. So it was really amazing. Disneyland, just like for Chris, it's hard to get to world. It's, it's hard for us to get to. And LJ, I know you've been definitely going more frequently. Have you found that living more West coast and obviously you're Southern, have you just gotten used to the commute to get there? Do you still think it's, I hate it. It's oh very- my gosh. <laughs> It's so, it's so hard and awful. And like, you know, what is, does make it like much, much better is like, if you commit to just like direct flights or nothing, like it will absolutely change the journey. And I, I'm, you know, I like to be frugal. And so direct flights are always 
going to be far more expensive. And I've just been like, you know what? It is what it is. I don't want like the journey, like the plane ride is about five and a half hours. But like, if you stop or if you take a um, non-direct flight, you're, you can plan on like a solid 10, 12 hours of travel before you're not even counting, you know, like the drive there and the drive, like just literally like airport travel. And I'm, it's not for me. I got to be honest. It's not for me. I, I just want to, I just want to fly direct from now on. And I think that's like the way. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I love that you said that because it is so true that it feels overwhelming. Like Im- immediately when I said, does it still feel like a barrier for you? You were like, absolutely. I hate it. It's the worst. Yep. And I think most West coast people feel that way. And for the reverse, like for you, Chris being, I mean, getting to Disney world, which is where you want to be. You weren't at the conference. It killed you. Like sometimes the commute feels so overwhelming, but then sprinkling in that advice, LJ of just get the direct flight. It's like one of those mm-hmm. one step things it makes that it we, doable. we talk about. It's like, take this small step and get the direct flight and, and get that piece of the overwhelming portion out of your mind. And it really does. It changes it because I hate to think that people that live on our side of the country don't consider Disneyland enough because it's, it's quote unquote hard to get to. Yeah, I would totally agree. Cause it's, uh, for me, it's going like coming from the West coast to Disney world, we're looking minimum to get over there. It's like a 15 hour travel day, no matter what. And it's whether you're driving to our bigger airport, which is Seattle, or if you're taking what I call a puddle jumper and leaving from our regional airport, which is actually what I prefer to do now. Um, and we're actually going to try it this next summer for the first time ever with kids, like the whole nine yards, we're going to Disneyland for our first family trip. And it's going to be, I'm checking suitcases, like trying it all for the first time. And the funniest part, I think now, now that I do that puddle jumper and just get there, it is the scariest part for me is checking the bag because I'm scared that I'm going to lose my suitcase because if I get there (laughs) and I have nothing for the kids, like what are we going to do? So the lucky thing is, is now everything has like delivery to resorts. So I'm not too worried about it. And we're just going down to Disneyland for next summer. We're not doing the cross across the United States yet. Cause that's, Hey, didn't you uh, hear our dopey last week? Somebody forgot shoes for her kiddo. So I feel like we could make everything work. <laughs> yep. Yep. In there. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my gosh. That episode was hilarious. Okay. I did, you know, for me, we're going to dive really deep, obviously, as we do on these episodes where we finished our mega sevens. They were so much fun. I really feel like they targeted so many important parts of the planning process for Disney World. And I'm happy to be back to our normal structure with the sevens today. And obviously us breaking down Disneyland Park, just really tapping into the nostalgia and what it is. You know, people, one of the biggest things that I think people don't realize is Disneyland is the destination and the park. So this episode Mm -hmm. is specifically the park. You know, we talk all the time to our clients, to one another, and even on this show about how people will say, well, I want to go to Disney World. And then, you know, I'll say, which parks do you want to go to? And they're like, Disney World. I'm like, I think you mean Magic Kingdom, you know? So the Magic Kingdom equivalent in California is, of course, still just called Disneyland. So we're going to break it down today, talk about the right way that we feel you should be tackling this park um, and some good tidbits about the destination as a whole uh, when we come back. Hey, Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast listeners. Have you joined our online communities yet? You can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast, where we're connecting daily with listeners, answering questions, and sharing our favorite Disney memories. Joining one of our communities, especially on Facebook, is like pulling up your own chair and joining the conversation yourself. Why let Tuesday be the only day you hear from us? Come join us to continue episode conversations or maybe even tell us if you disagree with something we've said. We're planning trips, offering tips, and ready for you to pull up your chair. So follow the links in our show notes and join us at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. All right, welcome back. We are ready to hit the sevens, but before we do, I kind of need to know, LJ, do you still have the postcard that you sent about Asher? I do. I think that I put it, I'm for, I'm for sure hundred percent that I have it, but where I think it is, is in with like his other baby things. Like, you know, the little like things yeah. you bring home from the hospital and like that kind of stuff. I think I put it in there for such a special like Asher centric memory. And when we went back for the first time as a family, 
I mean, we're getting a little off topic here, but like that was a huge year for me. I left, I did end up leaving enterprise later on and uh, we bought the farm in Kentucky. And just like, we took like the huge leap to follow God into this, like, you know, great unknown. And there was a time period that I had, you know, the, the two mortgages, the house in Ohio that hadn't sold yet, the farm in Kentucky, we had no insurance. I was pregnant with him. We had two kids. Neither one of us had jobs. We had car payments. Enterprise like owned my phone. Like it was really like, it was, you know, quite a thing that happened. And I've always really loved that. Like Asher is the baby that like was riding along with me. Like, I, I feel like the, like the tangible piece of our faith to be like, you know, God is leading us somewhere crazy town, but we're brave enough to go with him and to also have this little stowaway. So it's always been special to me. It's really great. I uh, I want to use that as a segue into happy because I mean, that was <laughs> really happy yes. stuff. And talk about the things about Disneyland Park, the park there specifically that make us the happiest. And I want to talk about specifics for sure, but I first want to identify and just acknowledge that there is a difference. If you've been to both, there is a difference in the feeling of nostalgia that you get and the connection that you feel just to Disney itself, knowing the origins and the start and the history, it all starts here. And some of the just everything we love it. That's, that's where it starts. Right. And I, I think, am I just attached to this, this destination and this company in a way that's different? Or do you all feel like that's also something you can truly feel? No, I feel the exact same way. And I think that's a lot of people are like, well, it's really not that great, you know, but at the same time to know that we literally have a tour called walking with Walt, like to have that moment where you can know that like, yes, it was a lifetime ago. I am never going to see him, you know, in person myself, but at the same time to know that it was where Walt was walking when he was creating this and he learned from it too. And I think the biggest thing too, I mean, you look at it and for example, just a couple of days ago, Dick Van Dyke was at Disneyland. He goes to Disneyland, like he chooses Disneyland and there's a reason for it. And it's because he walked there one day with Walt. And so knowing that magic, like seeing him and knowing that he was there, he's 99 years old and he was enjoying the Dapper Dance. Like I'm of course very pregnant right now. And I'm just bawling my eyes out because I know what that magic feels like I know I can smell it. I can smell where they're at. I can feel the air. I can like that sense of pure Disney magic truly comes to life when you are in Disneyland specifically. I also agree with you guys completely. Like I feel like Walt is my spirit animal. (laughs) Like I feel like I have such a deep connection to Walt. Like I want to be Walt when I grow up. Like I, I love him so much and I've read a lot about him and I just, I feel him all over the place in Disneyland and definitely like in Disneyland park proper. Like I totally feel Walt like all over Disneyland park. And that's honestly like, that's a big part of why I continue to go there. Like I do, I do love Disneyland, but when you have like something so similar, five minutes from your house, why do you, why would I like, what's the pool for me to travel those long travel days that we just talked about. And it is that that's Walt's place. That's such a great way to say it because you're like, why would I go somewhere that's so similar? Because it is. I mean, we've already broken down the differences, but at the end of the day, it is similar. I mean, these are Disney destinations. And why do you travel cross country and put yourself through that? And you all got stuck in the airport even at one at one time. And, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> and this is why we do it, you know, because there is something to be said for the origins. And even if you're not a Disney fanatic, I think it's tangible and I think it's important. I And here's a lesser one. <laughs> The snacks and food are better at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> no argument. I don't know what that is. If it's like they can, I don't, I don't, is it because they have fewer in attendance that they can pull stuff off, but it's like, it's, it's consistent. I don't that's know what really, it is. That's a good point. It could be, it have to do with that, that it's a smaller, they're cooking for a smaller crowd, but like, can we just talk about the churros for a second? Because the Disney world churros are kind of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they are garbage. One hundred percent. Did my kids love, love, love the Disneyland churros? And they like when as soon as we get there, they're like all talking about churros. 
and yeah. they just want like basically to be like from one churro stand to the next like they never want to be without a churro in their hand <laughs> and here's a question for you guys I had heard and this I might be wrong but I heard that all of your churros at Disneyland are gluten-free is that true or a rumor that I believe is a rumor yeah we should do a real-time fact check on that that's interesting but the the churros at Disney World are hard and I think this is kind of I'm using churros as an example because I think it's Well, it's funny and it's true, but the ones at Disneyland, they're like soft. And like you said, there's variety, Mm -hmm. they're ever changing and they're good. And you do want to have one in your hand at all times. And I was so excited to get one at Disney world after having one at land. Cause churros are like in my, that's like in my realm of those are one of Allie's desserts. You know what I mean? Like, you know how you have like, these are LJ's desserts. These are Chris's desserts. Mm -hmm. Things we love. Cinnamon based treats like that. Those are in my bag of desserts that I love and so I'm like I need a churro right now and I was it was horrible and and so the snacks and food are just better like the blue bayou the restaurant there is the one that you can sit in and watch um pirates of the caribbean pirates thank you so much we don't have really much like that I mean you can kind of see living with the land from garden grill and the Mexican fiesta boat tour that Becky from the podcast called remarkable. Um, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you can see, um, you can see it's a small world from Pinocchio's. Okay. Well, none of those, <laughs> no, none of those compare. I'm sorry. Those are, <laughs> these all, are all stretching hard. Stretch. And like, I know we said this wasn't going to be a comparison episode, but these are the things that make me happy. And when we're talking strategy as it pertains to Disneyland, I want to think about where am I eating, right? So hitting the right snack stands and doing that research and knowing that there are good there are good options here. And then also knowing where you're going to sit. And for me, that includes finding the unique and delicious places. There's also a character meal that, like the food was just okay. It was buffet style. Um, they're on Main Street in the plaza, right? And it's over on the right when you walk into the in. I will say that for me, that falls into the, strategy of the right way to do this park because would you both have you both had that meal I have have you had it LJ yeah so would you both agree with me that it has the most character of any meal like on both properties I just felt like it was a huge range and a huge number of characters I mean we met some really really unique people I talked about it on this you know the Disneyland episode we did before and to me it's kind of the right way to start your day because you knock off so many characters and you have a good meal. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree that the range is very large. Like recently they've had Max from, you know, Goofy Movie and they've had Mary Poppins. It's Minnie. Minnie is the main main draw there. So it's it's interesting, but I... I would agree. Definitely check out the character meals. I think um, I actually just tried storytellers this last time. And I think personally, I like the character meals more at Disneyland than I do at Disney World. But I want to say I fact checked it for the churros. Not all churros, according to Plan Disney, which is an official Disney site, are gluten free. So definitely be checking specifics on every churro cart because we literally have them every like 15 feet. Uh, actually, we could go taste test them and do a whole episode. I, I think- will happily volunteer for that. I call that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, another really good thing that makes me happy about Disneyland, and this is not typical alley. I'm not usually hitting the parks for the attractions, right? Like I love the rides and there are specific rides that I really want to ride no matter which park I'm going in. Um, and it depends on who I'm with too, but I, I really feel like it's important at Disneyland park specifically that you're hitting rides because they're originals. They're things that Walt had his hands on. So you're getting a better, longer pirates of the Caribbean. You're getting small world that actually was at the world's fair, you know, like the whole front and everything. Um, and the inside it's the original one. And, And I just think allowing yourself to experience and actually sort of ride through history. Is that too ridiculous no No, because I I think it's true I think it's true yep I would totally agree with that because and that's the one thing actually on our recent uh social media posts about the dopey episode somebody had said that they skipped all of the duplicate rides between 
you know, that we're at Disneyland and Disney World. And it's like, that's my number one thing. Do not do like, even if it's small things, whether it's you're sitting tandem with somebody else in the ride car, or if it's major things like, like you said, our pirates is very different. Um, You have to pay attention and know both rides well, but it's way longer. And there's other scenes that you do not have at Disney World. I literally love that Chris keeps saying our or we. Yes. Like she owns part of the park. She's like, <laughs> oh, the way we do it. <laughs> but I I say that I speak the same way about Disney World. I'm like, totally. when I'm referring to, to Disneyland, I'm like, well, our castle is a little <laughs> bit better. <laughs> exactly. Do, like you think I true? do you think our castle is better? Because I, I mean, all respect to Baby Castle, and I love that it's original, but, like, I know Chris is very passionate that it's the best, and another one of the agents within Smart Moms that's a friend of all of ours, um, Brittany, who's really big into Disneyland, she, like, goes to bat for Baby Castle all the time about how it's so much better. Okay, I, so I here, you gotta do pictures, but better? Here is my argument, and and I'm guessing Brittany will agree with me on this too, is you had already tapped on it, is it's the history. The history behind the castle makes it better because when the castle was originally built, it was not built for a pre-existing princess. It was built to promote the, the princess coming. And so that piece of it, the fact that you don't have to pay to walk in it, like definitely do the walkthrough. It's a cool experience. Um, it is, there are stairs. So if you have somebody that has a bit of a mobility issue, like be aware of that. But I, but I will give you guys credit that I do think walking down main street, especially given that I have recently done both this year and remembering the difference between Disney world and Disneyland, like it is underwhelming when you come and you like barely see the the turrets like yes. kind of popping up. It's like okay, LJ, I wanted hear- I wanted that towering piece, but it's still LJ, super. Did you fun. hear Chris? Did you hear Chris just give us credit for that? I'll take yes, credit we, for that all day long. Yeah, we built that. That was part yeah, of we, our, we that our hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Um, yeah, I think these are the these are the things that make me happy about Disneyland. You know, experiencing originality and, and history and origins and um, having the food that is better, making sure you're prioritizing those sit down meals. Again, there are, like you said, Chris, there are, are out of park character meal experiences. But if we're talking specifically about building a great Disneyland day, uh, those are my favorite restaurants. I would love to do that character meal with Minnie because you're going to see so many people that just you're not eating with Captain Hook at Disney World you know and Uh Rafiki like Rafiki was there when I went it was just the coolest parade of characters coming through and that's just my favorite way my absolute favorite way to start a day is a character meal just anywhere I am and so that's why I love that and then of course Blue Bayou just for its complete uniqueness and delicious food they have the Tiana's there now is open and it's quick service which I was surprised. I For a long time, I thought it was going to be a sit down. And then when it opened, I was like, oh, I misunderstood. This is a, a quick service, which is nice. So I'm, I'm excited to try Tiana's though. There was like a beans and rice thing that I thought looked really good. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then let's stay in happy. Let's talk a little bit about Toontown. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Mickey Street. If you have kids or even if you were ever a kid yourself, um, <laughs> Toontown is just it is the best Disney has to offer. I'm I'm not even kidding. I feel like pretty strong in saying I, I'm still, I've talked about it on the grumpy episode of this podcast and on the Disneyland versus Disney World comparison episode of this podcast. And I'm going to talk about it right now on this episode because I feel really strongly about it. Toontown should be ever in, on both coasts. And it, it to me is what Disney is. If you're a little kid and you're imagining going to Disney, you like, yeah, you go to Mickey Street. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think, and it's so cool because I, so I was supposed to go right around the time COVID happened and then we've kind of just bumped trips back. And so I just got to go recently, um, within the last month and a half or so. And I went while I was pregnant. So I'm like envisioning this. I'm also now a travel agent. So I'm, I'm going with a very different perspective, especially when I'm doing these solo trips of I'm watching for like, you guys can legitimately laugh at me. I walked into every single restroom in the Disneyland park because I have a ranking system that I'm doing of like the bathrooms, like things (laughs) like that. And so I was looking at Toontown in the same way and it was seeing how they set that entire area up. It is set up beautifully for families. It is set up to play. It's also set up for those, those kind of pull off spots that you might need a little bit of a quiet break because you're having a kid have a meltdown. Like 
or you brought in your food and you need to sit down and have a snack. Like it is. And like you said, it is what I remember as a kid because you know, being a nineties kid going when I'm eight years old, walking into Toontown back in the day and seeing, I have very, very vivid memories of walking in Minnie and Mickey's houses. And so to see them not necessarily keep them the exact same, but they tweaked them a bit. And even this last time I was there and I was closing the park down in Toontown, like the very last ride I rode was Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway. And to see that Mickey and Minnie were still out meeting doing meet and greets in front of their houses at like 1230 in the morning. (laughs) Like it was just insane to me because it's, they were keeping that entire magic. The lights were going like, you want to feel like you walked in to, you know, Mickey's fun house or clubhouse or whichever Mickey cartoon you're currently on with your littles go spend an afternoon in Toontown. Like there's no joke. I like, I don't understand why Disney world doesn't have it yet. I really don't. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm completely in agreement. I, I absolutely love that section. My kids love it. I feel like we spend an inordinate amount of time back there. So many of the rides, like the, like, the headliner type feeling rides I feel like are back there now with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway being back there. And I, I feel like my kids want to spend all, all their time back there. Yeah, I, I, it's important. I think if you're planning a Disneyland day, especially if you have little ones that you are budgeting quite a lot of time. I always recommend when I'm working with families to go to Disneyland at minimum, you're starting with a three day park hopper because even though there's only two parks and even though they're close together, there's a lot to absorb and experience in those two parks. And you want to be able to budget half a day in Toontown if you want, you know, because it is really unique. And uh, another thing I was just thinking about, we haven't mentioned, like we were talking about original rides and things like that. We haven't mentioned the Haunted Mansion, which is really different. It's even in a completely different location um, of the park, I think, right? At Disney. Yep. And it's, it's its own big actual mansion it actually goes like underground, which you don't realize. And because it's going under the train, tra- train track, I, I believe. And so yep. to me, I just, those, those are the things you, you have to ride pirates. You have to ride haunted mansion. You have to go to Toontown. You have to spend significant time there. And then I was thinking genie plus at Disneyland. It's, it's like kind of a must to me just because genie, in my opinion, is always a must. And at Disneyland, it's more of a fixed rate. You can add it ahead of time. You can't use it really till you're in the park. So it's not as stressful of a thing until, you know, at, at that 7 a.m. mark. But out of curiosity, because I knew I wanted to talk about Genie Plus, I just pulled up a, do you all ever pull up the map for Disney when you're not there and just look at what wait times are and things? <laughs> yes. Daily. For no, Daily. For no reason. Who, for no reason. I don't, why am I doing this? It makes me feel better. I don't know. I agree. I like looking at it and I'll just look at the map and I look at the park times. So the wait times as we're recording this at Disneyland right now, there are only two attractions hitting over a half hour wait. That's it. Which mind you, we're also kind of hitting like the peak time in the morning yes. on the West coast for yeah. people to be showing up. Like people start showing up at about eight thirty to nine o'clock in the morning. It's about nine thirty right now. We, this is like, people are getting their coffee. They're getting their day going. They would be rolling into the park. So it is Ali. I, I will say, I will change your statement by one word is there is no kinda. This is like, I tell everybody that will listen to me, especially, and again, this is a bit of a comparison. Sometimes I can argue not doing Genie Plus at Disney World. I I could see it sometimes for certain people, certain, cer- certain situations, but Disneyland, it's a no brainer. It, it, like you said, that fixed price, it also includes our version of Memory Maker, which is PhotoPass. There is just so much more, I feel like, value to it. And like you said, because the parks are close and if you're park hopping, it just makes it so much easier. And with Genie Plus, you easily can do an extended weekend vacation and still feel like, yes, I've actually hit all the rides. I wanted to hit a couple more of the big headliners. You're not getting up at seven to get that virtual queue and like stress out about it. And it just makes it really, I think it's one of the reasons why I really love Disneyland is it adds to that laid back feeling of not feeling the pressure of, I got to get to the next ride and I have to walk three miles to get there. (laughs) Definitely. And I Definitely. argued with you guys. I argued with you guys about the about the park hopper here that it's like you like it, it works for a lot of people, but it's not like something that I feel like I can say everybody has to get it. 
for Disneyland, I feel the opposite. I feel like I always have, I always want the park hopper because the the parks usually close at different times. So I could go to the one that's open later. I can hit the parade at Magic Kingdom. There's just like, there's, I feel like there's so many reasons, but it, it all comes back to like being able to walk from one park to another in about two seconds they're literally yeah. like a football you field just dis- distra- apart from each other you could be in the back of a park and think i want to be in the other park now and you could be there in five minutes mm-hmm. yep um let's um that's let's use that then let's transition thinking about those wait times and what you can accomplish i want to move into sleepy because it's early at on the West coast right now, as we're recording this and the wait times are low and you could really accomplish a lot if you have early entry, which Disneyland Mm -hmm. on-site resorts do offer. So I want to, of course you can stay off site when you're visiting Disneyland. And of course it's easy. It's still walkable. It's still packageable. And it's, it's a great way to save money, but it does cut a bit on experience of course. And you can accomplish a lot if you capitalize on the early entry, which does vary by day. But if you can get into Disneyland Park early and knock out six attractions that have a 10 minute wait, you can have a much more relaxed day. And I think any way we can look to have a relaxing Disney experience, especially with little ones, it's worth it's worth spending money. I agree. I'm a huge Grand Californian fan. I want to be there. That's like what feels like Disney to me. I do. I, I love all the on-site hotels. I've stayed in all of them. Um, I really like the Disneyland hotel, but I just love the Grand Californian. And I like, I'm absolutely known to splurge to get that downtown Disney view. Cause I, then I, I like the, the feeling that you're never like, you're just at Disney the whole time. Like you, I don't honestly know that any of our hotels compare to that feeling. Cause none of our hotels are so, so, so like in the magic as the Grand Californian is. And to be like, to be able to open your balcony door and like, you feel like you're in downtown Disney and like, you're looking over and everybody's so excited. And uh, it's, I'm telling you it's worth the money. Yeah, I agree. And, and if, if for nothing else, I mean, obviously LJ, you and I talk all the time about how we're big on splurging for that type of experience. And I understand that it's not for everyone, but even if not for that reason, I mean, the early entry, I think is for everyone. You know, unless you like, are we sleep in and we don't really care about getting things accomplished in the day, which I'm talking most people that are visiting, they want that. And you can walk from any of these resorts and be inside Disneyland park in 10 minutes and, and mm-hmm. plowing through attractions. I, I do love, and I'd be, you know, it'd be a mistake not to mention the fact that good neighbor options for Disneyland are great money savers and walkable. And I think that's great, but I I would rather not focus there because I think the right way to do this, you know, um, when it comes to experience is to stay in one of those resorts. You mentioned two of them, the Grand Californian is going to be the most deluxe, most expensive one in most cases. Um, but it's also the most immersive and, and bubble like one. Uh, but there's also the Disneyland hotel, which I think has the most Disney touches within the rooms at, as of now, but they're redoing the the other resort. It's going to be the Pixar themed one. And the monorail is different at Disneyland. So it, at World, it connects, you know, and I don't want to compare, of course, but at Disneyland, the monorail stretches from the Disneyland hotel area. And you have to actually have a park ticket to Disneyland to ride the monorail. Have you all, I haven't even ridden the monorail at Disneyland. Have you? I have not. I, it's, I'm ashamed of it. The, the, no. I wanted, I wanted to like make a, a point of doing it one of the times that I was there and I had, I was shocked to learn that you have to crash your stroller down. And I had um, Ace who was like baby strapped to my chest when this was going on. And then I had Cy and it was just me and the two of them were on a trip together. I had like the double stroller. And I remember like I was balancing like fries and chicken nuggets on the top of my stroller as well. So I got up there and they were like, you have to fold your stroller. And I was like, never mind. I will walk. I cannot. Uh, Yep. Well, and it also drops you directly into the park too. So that's another thing to note is that it takes you, like you said, Allie, from near the Disneyland hotel. Like you said, you have to have that park ticket and it's because it takes you directly into Tomorrowland, which to me, I love, I have ridden it. Um, It's kind of, it's another ride to me. Like I, like that's what I count it as. And so, um, and it's kind of the same way with 
our train as well, because when we are on our train, like there are different scenes and things like that. And so that is, again, one of those things that while we have them at both sides, definitely don't skip those duplicates because it's a ride. It's not it. Yes, it can be a means of transportation, but it's definitely a ride. Yeah. And in the monorail, you know, Elja and I haven't done it and we've both been to Disneyland a lot. And so I think it's one of those things where bunch of times, yeah. Is it a make or break to your trip? You know, probably not, but is it really Disney and really fun and enhancing it for sure? And you're very unlikely to be riding it if you're not staying, you know, maybe at the Disneyland hotel even or, or over in that, that direction. So I, so I had you- just done can I add a little more, Alan? Yeah, please, please. I I had just done um, offsite not long ago, and it was, um, you know, honestly, I'm like, why did I do that? And I think I was trying to keep the costs under control. It was like a trip wasn't really planned, and then we were like just going to add it. And I was like, I would like to, I'd like to not, you know, go too crazy. And y'all know I have a pretty big family, and we were bringing our uh, our nanny with us as well. So it was like party of eight, and so two rooms at the Grand Californian tickets and all that. And I was like, let me just stay off site for this one. And I got to tell you, it was, it really was rough. Like we had a, we had a rough time. Um, it's part of my policy. Like it's a law of LJ to not take two forms of transportation any, anywhere. Like I would Uber and you, this was, this hotel was like set up so that I had to take two forms of transportation every single time. Like we had to get into our, we rented a van. So we had to get into our rail van and drive about maybe about three miles to the like parking lot and then get on the bus and like take that into like the that where the actual parks are and I was like oh what was I thinking what did I do to myself like it I just totally was it was one of those situations where it was like I should have never done this without consulting somebody who knows more about Disneyland than I do because I just assumed that like a good neighbor hotel was going to be in a good situation and we needed like we had needed a suite hotel because it was we had eight of us and to stay in one room so I really have regrets over the whole thing and wish that I had just either not gone like just saved the money for another trip or just gone ahead and splurge and like let's make it let's just go ahead and make it a thing so I I would like to, to you guys to know you listeners out there that there are good there are good good neighbor hotels and there are bad good neighbor hotels and you really want to like I feel like I'm like you know just I'm like I was like the epitome of like thinking I knew what I was doing because I know about Disney and and not digging into it more but if I would have had a like an actual travel agent and had been like telling them like I want to be able to walk there because there's there is Disney there's good neighbor hotels you can walk so don't make my mistakes y'all And that's like a perfect segue into our sneezy just because talking resorts and things like that. So I, on my most recent trip was the very first time I've ever stayed on property for Disneyland. I've always, always been hardcore offsite, like power to the offsiders. And I can say that because I'm, I consider myself boots on the ground and I consider myself a Disneyland person. I go very frequently to Disneyland. And so One of the things is the part that I think that I have the hardest time with when it comes to offsite now is you are truly taken out of that Disney bubble. When you leave, it is you walk out of kind of the little walk path and there are people on the other side of the street with microphones talking about any and every Mm -hmm. kind of agenda that they can think of. It is nice because there's like there's a McDonald's across the street. There's a Panera There are some other things, but at the same time too, I, especially if you are looking at keeping that magic alive, especially when you're talking about these family vacations and you want to be there with your little ones as a mom. I will only stay on site now. I will not bring my kids and stay off site. I will stay off site as an adult because I'm doing it to do it for work and experience other resorts that are near so that I can help my clients. But I will not. And I say that with like an underlined, bolded, all of the things. I will not stay off site anymore. And it's because that magic is there. And Ali, you were referencing it. So we currently have Paradise Pier. It is going under construction. I actually went and saw it recently on that last trip. It's becoming Pixar Pier Hotel. It is absolutely gorgeous. And when you're talking about having those midday breaks, you do not want to walk outside of that bubble and you want to be able to leave, you know, 
leave main street and be in the pool in 10 minutes because you're that close to everything. Mm -hmm. That proximity is key. And so, I mean, you can't, you can't get a monorail water slide. You can't get a crush water slide at one of the good neighbors. You just can't, that's just not going to happen. And I I like that you started to segue to sneezy because this was my sneezy. So LJ, I'm glad you brought it up because my sneezy is exactly what you said. You said there are good, good neighbors and there aren't. And if you can't walk in, if it's not less than half a mile, your feet are going to be like, this was a mistake. You know, even the one mile away feels really far and it's doable for sure, but it's not ideal. And I'm just avoiding not allowing myself. We've used the phrasing here before. I'm avoiding not allowing myself to visit Disneyland instead of just like, popping in. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to have a, a fully immersive experience. And so can you, do you have any other like things you avoid about Disneyland park? Because I really feel like it's kind of getting to be a perfect park. Um, uh, It's original rides, right? Like we have Mr. Toad and we have uh the evil queen, the snow white, really scary ride. <laughs> I guess maybe I'm <laughs> avoiding that with littles because it, the tree scene is kind of scary. Um, But you know, the, the different lands they have and the original attractions, grades shows um fantasmic at disneyland is in disneyland park and it's over in that water kind of near i guess where like thunder mountain and things are and i i just love it there so in terms of experience once you arrive in the park um i'm not avoiding much i'm avoiding one one thing just one and it's because i've done it before so i can say that i've done it but i avoid matterhorn like no other So that is one of our mountains. Um, We call it the chiropractic ride because you get off that ride and you need to go get an adjustment afterwards. It's very um, jerky, but it, again, is one of those pieces that you definitely need to at least ride once to experience it. But if you're going to ride it and it it does have a height requirement, so you can't take the littles on it. But if you're going to ride it, I would suggest doing it like as your last ride, because I know a lot of people that get kind of messed up afterwards on it, but it, it's just, it's too jerky for me now. I, I choose not to ride it and I'd rather go hit, you know, big thunder a couple more times. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I've, really heard, I've heard that before, but I've not had, I've not had any negative experience with it. It's one of my kids' favorites. And I actually don't, there's some other rides that bother me far, far more than Matterhorn. I feel like Matterhorn is what I don't know. I've not had the experience. What experience? What which out of curiosity, what do you have trouble with at Disneyland? Oh no, I don't think anything at Disneyland. I feel like I don't I don't think I have a sneezy. My only sneezy would be that I avoid sitting at night. Like I don't want to do that anymore. Like that's past I'm like I'm past yeah. that point in my life. My sneezy at Disneyland, Disneyland is staying off site. I feel like I love everything else. I love coming like I love coming in and seeing the rare characters. I love this. Just there's literally nothing that like stands out to me and makes me feel like I avoid that. I would, you know what I would say jokingly is that I try to avoid the shops because I feel like the merchandise is so good over there. I am constantly <laughs> like whipping my wallet out. So I'm like, let me just pass by one or two to not, not pay it, not, you know, go into debt. But I feel like the merchandise is so cute. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think everything at Disneyland is really good. I'm just not personally a person that has like, I don't really get stomach sick. I don't care where I'm com- where I live. We have this amusement park with this really rickety. It's actually like broken a ton of records. It's the longest wooden roller coaster in the world. And it's if you're from Cincinnati, you know what it is and you love it and you'll defend it to the death. And because I grew up riding this attraction, I think I'm just conditioned to not care about being jerked around a ton, like on rides. And so I don't avoid stomach things, rickety things. Uh, Some, I will give a warning, the submarines, the submarines, Mm -hmm. those can be a bit claustrophobic. So like, if you have an issue with tight spaces, like do either of you have an issue with tight spaces? Because some people are like, get me out of here. I'm locked in. This is tight. I'm not doing it. I don't, I don't have that issue. No, we, we did just go, we just did that, uh, on in April with the whole, like my whole leadership was te- team was there actually planning the conference and we did like, we made a point to do it. And I, I, I see what you're saying, but like, I didn't feel any kind of way. Yeah. I think it's just a good warning. Like to be like, if you could feel this way, if you ride, not anything like mission space at Disney world is like, turn around and don't ride me. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh gosh. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty good. I, but other than that, I mean, I'm eating the food, I'm buying the merch, I'm riding the rides, I'm watching the fireworks shows. Like I'm doing the things I'm not, but also I just traveled across country. So I'm also not avoiding things because it was hard for me to get there. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's pivot then. Let's talk grumpy because I think it kind of goes with sneezy. Not a lot makes me mad. I'm not grumpy about things. I, uh, I'm not even that grump. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is, you know, the castle's small, but we kind of already joked about that. I'm really not grumpy about it, if I'm being honest. The one thing that I think I'm grumpy about is our magic band use. Um, mm. I don't feel like that system has rolled out as well as it could be. I'm a person that I will say that I've used a DAS pass in the past and I still had to pull out my phone. And so my phone battery is dying like crazy all day long. Um, you can't do the pay through your, even if you're staying on property, you can't pay via your magic band, even though it's a magic band plus yet. Like those are just, and that's, I mean, that is so, so surface level and it's because of, I want that full bubble experience. And so I think that would be my only grumpy um when it comes to the Disneyland park yeah I completely because like you said I want to shop I was at <laughs> when I was there I was the first probably like the first few times I feel like I was genuinely surprised by the lack of like convenience and I, I remember like joking with the fast the photo like the first the first time like I should be using a magic band right now it was like she's taking my photo and then she's she's like wanting to scan and I I think you'd like I had to pull the app out and was like had to to like get the ticket on my phone for for her to scan and I joked with her and I was like have you people not heard of magic bands and she laughed and she was like yes I wish we could get people to to use them over here they're you know it's like the which like they tried and it was like the locals not wanting to she talked to me about how there's a lot of annual pass holders over there and they were more reluctant to to take over and use the magic band so that does make me grumpy and the only other thing that comes to mind was the the was the um the monorail like I was grumpy that day when I could yeah. not just like roll my stroller right on the monorail with my like nuggies and fries intact and you know nurse my baby while we drive I was like this is subpar <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> And it's, I don't know, you know, would I feel that way if I did, if I wasn't picturing like our monorail back here, but I definitely am like this monorail situation needs attended to. <laughs> these things, these things just that we're mentioning just make me feel like people in California are just way more laid back. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to show up. Disneyland's going to be there. I'm going to eat. It's going to be fine because the only other thing, these it's sparking thoughts you know, as you're talking, dining Disneyland, you're making it 60 days day by day, you're not pre planning your whole trip by, you know, for one day. So I don't know if that makes me grumpy or not. It's a little inconvenient to have to think about it, you know, for five days, if that's how long you're going to be there. But also, it's a little easier to get. So if I want Blue Bayou, like, which is one of the more competitive dining reservations for inside Disneyland Park, everybody's going for it the same day instead of somebody that maybe had access to it further out like at Disney World. So I'm a little grumpy because it's a little inconvenient day by day, but also it kind of sets you up to have a better chance. So also not necessarily that bad. That makes me think of another grumpy that, which is that I am conditioned by Walt Disney World to think that I should not need to make a reservation the day before the day of like, if I don't care where I'm going to eat, but I just want to eat. I can pull up the Disney World app and be like, what's available? And there's going to be like 30, 60 reservations available. You know, like they might not be where I wish I was, or they may be across the park or in another, like in a resort or something, but like, absolutely, there's going to be a restaurant. And it's not like that at Disneyland. And I remember being like, oh, let's, you know, we had the leadership team there. And I was like, let's, you know, let's sit down and have a meal. And it's like, they like look at me like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we really needed to book things no. ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be sitting down. Let's use that to talk doc strategy then. You do have to be a little bit more prepped, right? Like you have to think a little bit farther out and familiarize yourself with where you're going to be and what your game plan is going to be. Did I, I mean, did I miss any sit down restaurants within Disneyland Park that you all make it a point to visit or eat at or really enjoy? I recently tried Cafe Orleans. I really liked that That's one. That's the one I had the soup um, at midday. Yeah. So, and I think they still do have the walk up. We did a sit down because we were going after a very specific dessert that was um, actually the candle from Hocus Pocus. I'm very thankful. And one of the things I'm always really, really thankful, especially when it comes to just Disney in general, is they don't look at me very 
you know, like a weirdo because typically I order like a kid's meal, especially right now while I'm pregnant, I can't eat a lot in one sitting. And so I wanted a smaller portion and things like that. And our waiter was super accommodating. He was also asking me like, oh, do you want me to add some sauces off of, you know, the adult meal and things like that so that I could still have that experience, but not the portion. I also, one of my, one of my go-to spots actually is Riverbell Terrace. Um, I've talked about it on previous episodes. I love Liberty Tree Tavern at Disney World. I love that kind of just wholesome food. And I feel like Riverbell Terrace is definitely different. It is not, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily comparable, but it gives me that wholesome feel as well. When I went back in 20, it would have been 2019, we went and had lunch actually, which was a first for me. And it was um, just a really good a good meal. And it's also one of the spots you can do the, um, phantasmic dining packages. Yeah. And so, and you can do it at lunch. And so one of the things though, is it's the only spot that you can do a dining package for phantasmic and have a seat. And there's very specific timeframes that you can do that because with phantasmic, it's literally on Tom Sawyer's Island. And so you can't, we don't have seating. Like we don't have an amphitheater. You literally are sitting on the sidewalk. That's where it's a roped off section. And so when you are doing those phantasmic dining packages, it opens up really good areas. But if you really want that kind of premium style, definitely when you're talking doc strategy, get that phantasmic dining package at Riverbell. It's usually like a 730 seating ish right around there, um, which your travel agent will know all that. So just tell them that that's what you want and they'll take care of you. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I Have you ever done, have you seen phantasmic at Disneyland LJ or was it shut down? No, it was, the, I feel like it was shut down once when we were there, but then it was open the last time I was there and I wasn't in April and I was like, just tired. And I was like, I don't want to fight the crowds right now. So I just went back. So yeah. I have still not seen it. And I would like to, I need, I, now you guys are making me like want to plan another Disneyland trip and like specifically do the monorail and specifically <laughs> do Fantastic. Well, now you know the right way to do it. So that's why yeah. our yep. listeners do as well. Uh, you know, another doc strategy and Chris, I really like that one. I think anything related. It's so funny. If you like filter the Disneyland map to food, if, I don't know if you all have ever done that, but in your app, like a lot of the ones you click are just snack carts. Like it'll be like the churro cart here, the popcorn mm-hmm. here, the pretzel mm-hmm. here. Like I can't remember it being like that in the Disney world app, or maybe they just have less snack stands, but it makes me just really drive home the point that we've made a lot in this episode. We've talked a lot about food, which I think is great. People want to know. Um, but that's the way I would do those. And another good strategy uh, for Disneyland as a destination, even though we're really talking about Disneyland Park today, um, is to make sure you park up. And that the way I would strategize it is I would start one at least one day, if not two, inside Disneyland itself. And I would end at least one day. So I'd probably start Disneyland, end Disneyland, start Disneyland. Uh, because the variety is really easy. It's nice to have that change up in your day. It's not much more to add it. And uh, I, I think any day you get to start seeing the castle, but experiencing everything in both parks is a great day. Well, and for a lot of, I know a lot of our listeners are typically the East Coast travelers. And so to give you guys an idea of how close these parks are together, it is for me, I'm about a five, six female. It is 152 steps from one gate to the next. Like to go from Disneyland to California Adventure, it was 152 steps. And yes, I did count them. Like it's that close. So it's really easy just to kind of go back and forth. And like you said, I would, Allie, I would back that statement wholeheartedly is definitely start at least two days in the parks because you want that character dining breakfast one day. My other doc strategy is check out the breakfast chimichanga. It's at the Harbor. I will post it on our social medias. Like I'll post it exactly where to get it. I'm obsessed with this. When we just recently went, I went with about 40 other, 50 other um, travel agents. I had a group of about 15 of them. I'm like, you guys, you all have to try this. And every (laughs) single one of them was like, wow, this is amazing. It's a affordable. It's health. It's well, healthy when you come to theme parks, I should say, but it was a great way to start the day. And it's, and it's super easy. And like, it's not, it's not true quick service. It's literally, you walk up in the line, you pay and it's right there. So the other good thing though, about having two start days, you already mentioned, like you start one, maybe having that character breakfast, but then the next day, if you rope drop fantasy land, 
everything is pretty condensed at Disneyland, just in general. So if you plan to rope drop and head straight there, it's boom, 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 boom. You can knock out almost anything and be feeling super accomplished. So that's another reason I really like to start at least two days inside that specific park. And that's probably the way I would approach each of the days. I would say my doc, my doc strategy is like packing my afternoons. Do you like talking about the mornings and stuff? But I feel like we've gotten to a place where I pretty much want to sleep in even, even going at Disneyland and feeling like there's so much that I want to do. I still feel like my kids want to sleep in. They want to prioritize that. And I feel like the afternoons are so, so like laid back and calm. And there's a lot less um, like sense of urgency in the air. And people are just, I think, it's possible that you're getting people that are coming in the afternoon that are locals and they're, they are in a different frame of mind of like just enjoying an evening there and not needing to rush, rush, rush to like the, the different attractions. So I feel like you can get a lot done in the afternoon as well. Yeah. That's a really good point. And that goes back to the laid back California attitude that. I yes, think totally. You know what I mean? I think you're dead on with it. And I think it's, it's true. Um, as a vis- I'm like a sleep in, I don't want to rope drop person as well, but I keep going back to that long journey across the country thinking if I was there, would I be like super antsy, you know, but maybe I should listen to the better part of myself and just sleep in. Let's talk back full because there are a couple of questions. I feel like families that want to play in Disneyland. I know specifically with me that I've experienced, and I would assume pretty much any smart mom's agent that has worked with a family planning Disneyland. They've probably heard a couple of questions. Number one, will I be disappointed because it's it's so much smaller than Disney World. And number two, I've already been to Disney World. Do I really even need to go to Disneyland? And I think we've talked a lot about why both of those questions are not true. Of course, you should still go to Disneyland. Of course, you should experience. We, we haven't even talked about all the individual, you know, the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland Park and the little um, novel novel boats, you know, where you float past those little um, fantasy scenes. It's amazing. It's so unique and it has nothing to do. Your experience there has nothing to do with whether or not you've been to Disney World. One does not equate the other. And so I would say it has no bearings on the decision if you're going to go to Disneyland Park or not. And uh, it is it is smaller, um, yes, in size, but it's really not smaller in experience. You're getting multiple nighttime shows. And actually, one of our co-hosts let me know that Disneyland has actually more more attractions than Magic Kingdom does in a smaller space. So there's actually a lot more to do. Yeah, it's definitely compact. And I feel like one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is it worth it to sit for the parade like and wait for the parade? And it kind of ties into also a little bit of a doc strategy. And one, absolutely, yes. Like you need to be seeing our parade, especially the current parade that's running, which is Magic Happens. It is, I cried, I laughed. I would do it if I wasn't pregnant. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Watching the kids around me, it has more current characters and things like that, but it also has ties to older characters that as an adult, I loved. And so my, it kind of ties in, like I said, to a doc strategy is scope out where the parade route is and know that it starts and ends in two different places, depending on the time that the parade starts. So if you're checking that afternoon parade time, or if you're checking the evening time, my personal, I've tried a couple spots um, kind of along the parade route. And I actually like to kind of go camp out over by Small World. And I really like that spot, especially when it this time it was when the parade started at the about 3.30 in the afternoon because it started back there. And so they do a little bit of a different routine coming out um, from backstage. And it was super cool. It just that wash of magic. But I feel like that is one of the biggest kind of questions that people are like, oh, should I, should I just skip it and go ride rides? Um, and Allie, you're so right, is that there are so many other experiences too. You talked about the storybook canal boats. There's also canoes that you can physically row. I mean, personally, I'm not going to do that. That's also, I guess, a little <laughs> bit of a sneezy because I'm already working out enough, pushing a stroller and doing all the things. But I get also asked if they should skip Tom Sawyer's Island. And if you have littles and want a place to kind of just go grab some quick service food, head over there, kind of have a little picnic and let them explore. It's super fun. It's one of my favorite memories as a kid is taking my, my youngest sister. She was two at the time and we just kind of wandered and got to experience it all. I'm still team skip Tom Sawyer Island, even at Disneyland. <laughs> I'm not going. 
I'm not going with you. I'll I'll find somewhere else. But I was, you know, what you know, whatever you do, you. I think another bashful, and we I can't believe we haven't mentioned this yet, is people just you know thinking it's not worth it or not. I think it's just misunderstanding the park. Galaxy's Edge is in Disney. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we've made it this far into the episode. We haven't mentioned it. You're at you're. It's in the back of the park, back behind uh, Baby Castle, off to the left there. Which for any smart moms, travel agents listening today. Our hidden Mickey will be Baby Castle. And so if you travel <laughs> through and beyond Baby Castle, um, you're going to get to Galaxy's Edge, which having that at Disneyland and compact, I mean, you've got your everything you need for your fantasy lover, everything you need for your Star Wars lover. And it's every world sort of combining for, and your cartoon lover, your Toontown lover. You know, it's it's so many different dynamics of the Disney scene that people are wanting. And it's all housed in this little compact, very strategically laid out park um, that you can do in in one day. But I think it would be a dopey mistake to think you could do it all in one day, which that is my dopey is thinking you can do it all in one day and really allowing yourself the time to experience everything there is because I, I just think it's so brilliant to have Galaxy's Edge in that park. And I love it. I love that it's there. Yeah, I agree. I love the transition that they made. I love it more than Disney World's transition. I think it blends a bit nicer. Um, I don't know how the Imagineers did it to transition from like essentially Big Thunder-ish area into Galaxy's Edge. But for me as a Star Wars fan, it works. So yeah, I, I think the dopey mistake here is not is thinking you can do it all really quickly and not absorbing it all. And um yeah, I think that's my number one. Yeah, my number one is skipping the churro. Um, hands down. I will say it time and time again. Uh, at some point, we'll see if I, I get the courage to let you all see on our socials the fact that I've literally broken my toe running for a churro cart <laughs> at Disneyland. I do not do that at Disney World, but I will do that at Disneyland for sure. It's so good. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that's it. You know, this is a an immersive park, a nostalgic park, a fun park, a well designed and laid out park. You're gonna get good mm-hmm. food, good experience, good characters. That's another dopey mistake. Not investing time in characters at Disneyland is a huge mistake. You're getting unique ones. We talked on our grumpy episode about how quite frankly terrible I think the turnover of characters is at Disney World. And I don't think I just don't think Disneyland has that problem. You know, not meaning to compare, but let's be honest, you're just now able to meet Moana at Disney World, like literally this month. And I met Moana at Disneyland the like two months after her movie came out, you know, she was there and I met her and I well, my daughter met her. And if you're not investing in the characters at Disneyland, that's a huge mistake because they're walking around with people more, they're interacting more. It's people you wouldn't expect to see. It's people you wouldn't expect to see together sometimes, put together in shows and experiences. Even in Fantasmic, there are ones that you don't have at World. So I think that would be my other dopey is is that. Anything else? Any Anything else, you guys? I mean, we really broke that down. I feel yeah, like I think yeah I think we hit it all. I, I feel good I about feel it. Like my, let's uh let's take another break then. We come back. We're going to wrap this up and hit the lightning lane. Hey there, friends. I'm Katie Boone, one of your podcast co-hosts. I'd love to invite you to join my Facebook Disney planning community called Planning Disney with Babies, Toddlers, and Preschoolers. In my group, I love discussing all the aspects of planning your magical vacation with little ones. Find my community at facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. Again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. When you join, don't forget to tell me you heard about my group on the podcast. See you there. Hey, it's Becky from Smart Moms Podcast. So you keep hearing this word, Disney bounding, but maybe you don't know quite what it means. Or maybe you're already a Disney bounder and love showcasing your Disney fandom in the parks. Either way, come join us on Facebook at the Disney bounding community by Smart Moms Travel. We play games, plan outfits, do giveaways and challenges, and support each other in adding just a little bit of pixie dust to both your Disney vacations as well as your day-to-day. Find the link in the show notes, and I hope to see you soon in the Disney bounding community Facebook group. Welcome back. Uh, before we hit the lightning lane, I just want to ask, because I haven't yet, is Disneyland both of y'all's favorite park or is it the other park out in California that we haven't talked about yet? Hands down, Disneyland. Yeah, I also agree. I feel like just the connection to Walt is so huge for me there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, it's a kind of a hard one for me. I, I guess I feel like I have to say yes, but my heart is like pulling me no. So that really? makes sense. Yeah, but I but like I feel I keep feeling like no, Allie, you have to say yes. It's Disneyland. 
<laughs> so I'm just like going with that. I'm like talking myself into it, which is making me think it's not really how I feel. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're, I've already made a note of that now, Allie, and we're definitely going to be talking about that on that other park episode coming up. I feel like it's so interesting that we always get into like Allie needs therapy moments <laughs> on this show because it's like, she's like, part, my heart is telling me no, but I feel like I have to. I'm like, okay, it's okay to feel how like, you feel. It's like that. It's like that meme that floats around. That's like, I don't need therapy. I just need Disney. Mm-hmm. um but you know you're not wrong all right let's hit this (laughs) let's hit this lightning lane okay chris for a meal would you rather have breakfast at the plaza or dinner at the blue bayou dinner at blue bayou lj for a snack would you rather have a mickey bar or a churro churro yeah no question what i mean chris what do you think is the best ride or attraction that disneyland has in tomorrowland Ooh, uh, I'm going to go with space. Yeah, It's side by side at Disneyland, which is different than you experience in world. And that's, I think that's kind of cool. You can just bump and knock heads with the person next to you instead of just thrashing around by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what about okay, same question, fantasy land? Oh gosh. Okay. I'm going to say, I feel like this is a inviting a lot of argument but i'm gonna say mr toad's wild ride because no it's like, i'm it's- literally so oh, glad you really? said that i love it yes i was like thinking of my that's my that's my favorite i love it i'm not even kidding we used to be i love it too no, no, <laughs> what do you no. say you don't oh like it my gosh. no that's like the bottom of the barrel like oh I love my it. gosh i would I be love it i would be devastated oh. if they got rid of mr toad i'm not even kidding same same oh i don't think they would but at the same time like oh, i have a mr toad no. t-shirt i'm like a fan i'm like i would join the fan club for mr toad i love him see and i i guess maybe too it, okay not to throw you both under the bus but maybe it's a generational thing like <laughs> mr toad the only the only Excuse thing me, that how old i do you think we are have oh, whoa to- <laughs> whoa i'm like true 90s baby here so i grew up like roger rabbit that's where it's at for me, but I, I don't have any tie to Mr. Toad other than the ride. Like, I don't know, you know, I didn't watch any shows. I didn't know, you know, he's just, it's a ride and it's kind of weird to me. So how old are you? And it's hot sometimes. That's a great question. Uh, 31, 32. We are not in a different generation than you. Okay. You are eight years younger than me. Yeah, not even a little bit. Uh, that's 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 a lot. That's a lot of I we'll just say you know, you're so, that's a lot of time. We'll just say you're so young that you're just not wise enough yet. We won't take your opinion for <laughs> oh sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If she, if you're for gonna, tomorrow if you're or gonna, for fantasy land. If you're gonna call us old, then I mean I think that's fair, Ali. Good work. There you go. Yep. <laughs> um okay. Would you rather visit Toontown or Galaxy's Edge? LJ. Toontown for sure. I'm not a Star yeah. Wars nerd. Well, people that know me know I have an obsession with Kylo, but other than that, I can take it or leave it, but I love writing Kylo. Okay, Chris, what about you? Here's a really tr- a tough one for you, I feel like. What about Toontown versus Tom Sawyer Island? Oh, Toontown. <laughs> yeah, that's a really hard one. Sure. I just okay. need to hear you pass on Tom Sawyer Island. I'm just really glad you didn't give me the last one because I would I would have refused to answer that one. What about but... uh, New Orleans Square? Do you guys like New Orleans Square? What's the best part about New Orleans Square for you? I mean, it's a unique little area in Disneyland Park that Magic Kingdom doesn't really have, but... I like the mint juleps. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. Really, really, really amazing. And that's where Haunted Mansion is at Disney. Mm-hmm. And beignets. Mm-hmm. You can get beignets in New Orleans Square. I, it's it's a vibe. Like, I, And I say that wholeheartedly i and i will post on our socials they had like a pirate band kind of out there in the transition between adventureland and new orleans square and it was just so much fun they i feel like it's it's cozy it's a cozy area that you can get comfortable Mm in um and also for if you're a disney history buff type of nerd that's also where you're looking for a club 33 so Definitely go knock on that that tealish door and pray that it'll open for you. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I, I'm all about a vibe. Honestly, that is that is me. That is how I do. Just give me a good vibe and a good place to like sit. Honestly, and give me a mint julep and a, a beignet, and I'm super happy. 
there's literally nothing else I need. I will travel cross country if you tell me it's going to be a good atmosphere and a good snack. Well, I think I think we did it. I think if you listen to this episode, you're going to know how to master Disneyland Park and maybe even be convinced that you need to go. This is coming at a good time. Pretty recently, Disney pa- Disneyland, excuse me, packages for next year have opened up. So it's a good time to get planning. And I hope that this episode inspired that. And uh, you'll start that conversation with your smart mom travel agent because it's worth it. And we know how to do it right. I was just going to say, I feel like I'm about to go start that conversation because I feel like why, why, why am I, I mean, I know I'm going in January, but like, why am I, I need to go. I need, I was supposed to go in August and we had to, we had to cancel it because something, something came up. And uh, so now it's time for us to get back on that train. Yeah. Let's, let's plan it. Let's do it. Uh, that's going to do it for us on the Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast, Disneyland Park Edition. If you're ready to start planning that trip out to California, whether you live on the West Coast or you're just ready to make that cross-country journey and you don't already have a Smart Moms travel agent to connect with, please be sure, check out the link in our bio, get connected with a show host, and we will help you get there. We know the ins and outs. You're going to have a great time. It's going to be free. It's going to be worth it. If you have not already subscribed to this podcast right here that you are listening to, wherever you listen to your podcast so that our episodes are dropping into your phone or wherever you listen the day the second the minute they're released please take a moment do that press subscribe make us part of your week we want to be there to connect with you and make sure you're connecting with us be sure that you're following us on all social media platforms at smart moms plan disney podcast and until next time we'll see you real soon